Hi, good morning and welcome to Courageous Journeys with me, Theodora Michelides. Today I, we're going to be talking about how and why culturally accepted ideas about gender and beauty can have an adverse effect on our health and create cultures filled with myth. Um, I have my guest today is Michelle Calvarese. She has a BA in, from Villanova University and a master's from Westchester University. PhD from Texas A&M University. Michelle currently has been teaching. Uh, she's an associate professor at Fresno State. And from that, then she, we're going to discuss how she's gone from years of research and teaching into being a business owner and what she's doing now. So I am honored today to welcome my guest, Michelle Calvarese. Thank Thanks you very much for having me. I appreciate me. you being here. So um, it's, that's quite a big jump from doing that to entering the world of entrepreneurship and, and doing that. So I want to talk about the, the past and what you were doing with regards to your research. And you told me that um, you did quite a bit of time in Uganda and mm -hmm. in Asia. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what drove you to study and teach uh, medical geography and how'd you end up there? Actually, it was kind of a fluke, to be honest with you. <laughs> I ended up in a cultural geography okay. to begin with. So I was looking at cultural differences. And as a doctoral student, a faculty member at A&M mm -hmm. was researching HIV AIDS in Uganda okay. and ne needed a field assistant oh. and took applications. And I was picked as a field assistant okay. and uh, went there with a team for about four months. Mm -hmm and looked at diffusion patterns of AIDS. So where AIDS rates uh, were higher, where they were lower, what some of the cultural var variables were that attributed to that. And after that trip, it changed my whole perspective on the world. And I'm sure. my whole field of study changed after that point. Had you ever left the country before that trip? Um, I've never been to... Africa, or what would be That's considered... That's a pretty big cultural yeah, leap. Yeah, what would be considered a less developed country. Yeah, Just yeah. vacations here and there. Um, but once you're surrounded with that type of environment and you're working with people that, that have AIDS... Um, I can imagine that might be pretty it scary. It changes your life, yeah. 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 So, I mean, the emotions that you were experiencing, four months is quite a bit of time. Um, the emotions that you were experiencing while there and, and the things that you saw. Can, do, would you like to share a little bit about that? And then, Sure. Uh, well, we worked with the AIDS Support Organization. Okay, that's how you were able to get the mm -hmm, data in. Mm -hmm. It's a nonprofit uh, organization that was started by a woman whose husband died of AIDS. And the organization was actually put in place to educate people that have AIDS, that think they have AIDS, that have spouse members that have AIDS. Right, and there's a lot, a lot. Yes, yes. Cross-generational cross, cross -generational AIDS problems. Exactly, exactly. So we were allowed to work with that organization and have total access to their database, which is unheard oh. of oh. anyplace else. You can't walk into a hospital right. <laughs> in the United States and say, give me your files for all your AIDS patients. Yeah. Um, but in exchange for the results of our study, which was looking at the efficacy of their program and where there was the most need in terms mm -hmm. of building mm -hmm. more centers. So you were helping them as well. It was exactly. a good give. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And um, so four months, and then you, I imagine you came back stateside and then went to the Far East? or Yes. Okay. Yes. The reason we chose uh, Uganda first was... Uh, looking at their rate patterns over time. So they have had a very successful campaign mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s and the 90s. And reducing the AIDS problem. And reducing. Um, so we were looking at what was going on in a country that had very high rates but had rates declining. When I came back with all that data, I then decided to do the opposite approach and look at what is going on in countries that have low rates but are starting Increasing. to increase. Okay. And that's when I spent time in Japan and in Korea and Taiwan, where the rates are still relatively low mm -hmm. globally. However, they are increasing. Well, and there you were also doing disease in general, right? Tuberculosis and... Tuberculosis, yeah. Because in some cases you had to take a roundabout approach mm -hmm. uh, to get... To let them in, let To you get in? into countries. Oh, okay. So with Japan... The politics. It, exactly. So uh, with Japan, they weren't quite ready to acknowledge... An that HIV they had a problem, problem. Um, but 
tuberculosis has been in, wow. has been an issue. And their rates of tuberculosis were not necessarily increasing, but the rate at which they were decreasing was stalling because they have an aging population. And the way tuberculosis tends to manifest is you first become infected with tuberculosis. You could have it for decades and never know it. Not have major symptoms. Right. right. And then at some point when your immune system is compromised, it can transition to a tuberculosis disease or active TB. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we see this happening in the older generations mm-hmm. that are then passing it on to the younger generations. Right, right, without so. knowingly that they're doing that. You know, they think they have a cold at first or whatever with the whole coughing thing and right. then the virus is spreading. So how long did you spend in Asia, in the Far East? Um, probably about nine months or so okay. total. That's split quite up a bit of between time. the three the three countries. Okay. Yeah. And then the three countries, you were gathering the same kind of data from all three or? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think what I wanted to do was I was trying to build a cross-cultural database because mm-hmm. I was looking at what are place-specific factors that affect the diffusion of the disease because a disease, of course, transmits biologically a certain way. Right. But there are cultural implications, behavioral norms, Mm -hmm. myths, all of those sorts of things that affect how it's going to diffuse and the rate at which it's going to to diffuse. So there might be a myth about AIDS, for instance, that was present in Uganda, but wasn't present in Japan. Mm -hmm. Or views relating to sexual preference might be different in one Mm -hmm. country Mm -hmm. versus another. Uh, views uh, regarding condom use might be different. Among so that's all behavioral, right? Your know, behavioral, cultural, right? Stuff. The society and, and mm-hmm. what they have ingrained as far as what they believe to be truth, and then how they react to that truth. Exactly. And then their behaviors: is it going to promote the increase of the disease, or is it going to reduce right. it? Right. 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 So that that's was essentially fascinating. that was actually, that's the difference between my approach mm-hmm. as a medical geographer mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. a typical epidemiology study. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Uh, we're going to get into more about how that evolved into your current um, business that you are still developing, but things are moving along quite well uh, as we when we come back. But a little bit more about that really quickly. Um, let's see. So in Uganda, you were doing that. The, the transition between studying the disease into also noticing how um, beauty and culturally accepted ideas about mm-hmm. beauty and gender mm-hmm. play a role in all of that. Obviously, you started getting those ideas in your head while you were there that developed what you're doing now. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? What yeah. you were observing? and Yeah. When you're dealing with sexually transmitted diseases, to get to the root of behaviors, you have to have somewhat intimate conversations. So people were... Uh, I can. Uh, one thing about Ugandans is they realize that you need to be able to talk about the problem right. in order to address it. And that was one major distinction between Uganda and Japan, for instance. And Which uh, one was more willing to talk? Uganda. Okay. Um, so they had had an active AIDS uh, program going on there for several years before, before we went there. But when you start having these conversations, you realize that women are doing things to make themselves more attractive to the opposite sex right. that may have some health implications down the road or are just based in just based in myth. So this was actually a, a, a side thing that right, came right. up during the interviews. It wasn't necessarily what I went out purposely to no, research. But as you Although were I'm researching, inter- you're talking about all the things related to the attraction between exactly. the male and the female, and then that brings in what what does one think is beautiful. And, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Very good. So I, I want to learn more about that, definitely. So we are getting ready here momentarily to cut for commercial. And okay. And when we come back, we'll be going and showing you some images of what that means in different cultures as far as what they think is beautiful, how they're going to achieve that, and uh, what we're doing here in the U.S. So thank you for tuning in to Courageous Journeys. We will be right back. Uh, right here in the Tower District and all over the Central Valley, you'll see the Bobby Salazar signs everywhere. Let's bring in Bobby Salazar. Bobby! Hey, how are you? How's it going, man? Good. Real good to, real good to have you back on. Now, a uh, new sponsor of The Buzz, I want to thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, let's, well, I want to get right down to it. What'd you bring? 
Well, this is our famous uh, party tray. It's our variety tray, we call it, and it has just a little bit of everything. It has uh, little taquitos and burritos and quesadillas and guacamole. And it's one of the, the most popular ones that we sell. It's, uh, you can call in. We can have them ready in like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. You know how busy we are, but, you know, spur of the moment, this is a great deal to, to get for any party, any occasion. For the Super Bowl or any occasion, order a party tray from Bobby Salazar's. Stan Gross of Horn Photo. Are you looking for a camera that takes better pictures than your phone? Why not give Horn Photo a shot? We can show you fantastic cameras from Nikon, Canon, Sony, and GoPro. Your time is valuable, so before you buy from Costco, Best Buy, or the internet, come see us. We've got great prices and deals, super knowledgeable staff, and we've been selling cameras in Fresno for 76 years. We're in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Knees, or go to hornphoto.com, Fresno's Camera Center. Solar energy is now more affordable than ever. Hi, I'm Ty Simpson, sales manager of the new Bland Solar office here in Clovis. And right now at Bland Solar, we're offering a program with zero down payment. That's right, zero money out of your pocket. This new program is affordable and easy with guaranteed production and no appraisals needed. In fact, your new system can be up and running in as little as four weeks. Bland Solar looks forward to serving the residents of the Central Valley. So call us today at 554-5657. Bland Solar, the Valley's expert in solar. Hi, my name is Bonnie, and I'm a show producer here at CentralValleyTalk.com. We have a lot of great shows that you can share your business with our viewers. I'd love for you to give me a call. My number is 559-289-9687. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. For all of your real estate needs, call Mike Briggs Properties, 559-486-6758, or check us out at MikeBriggsProperties.com. Watch Tim Teeson live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. right here on CentralValleyTalk.com and on digital channel 33.2. If you missed the live broadcast, we're on every Wednesday night at 11 p.m. on Comcast Channel 200 and digital channel 43.5. You don't want to miss this. CentralValleyTalk.com Hi, and welcome back to Courageous Journeys. I have with me Michelle Calvaris, Associate Professor at Fresno State and business owner of Truth Skin Care and Derma Truth. And we are discussing some uh, pretty interesting things about what different cultures associate with beauty and what some of those ideas about what's beautiful, the, the uh, injuries and problems it can cause. So... <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, Michelle, we were just talking about that, and um, tell tell us about some of the beauty trends that you learned of while you were in Africa and Asia, and the types of adverse effects that they may have on health and women of young girls. Tell our audience some of those things that you were observing. Okay. Well, one of the more common uh, practices that was in Uganda, particularly in Western Uganda, was uh, what was called Ugandan fattening huts. And this is uh, something that goes against everything that we <laughs> learn uh, we should do in the United States. And in the United States, before marriage, what most women will do is go on a crash diet and try and to fit, fit into in, their dress, yeah, right? Try to Ooh, fit into their dress. That's not a crash diet, is um, it? <laughs> They pick a particular size of dress that they want to fit into, um, and they try to be at their best weight for their wedding. And so what are they doing with getting fat in Uganda? What's the deal? They with actually go into these huts and they're fed very high caloric fat laden yeah. cream. A lot of milk. Right. And That's what I was researching. Is exactly. A lot of because they have cows quite right. often. Right. And some also of some of the other African countries. Right. That consider the more weight to be more beautiful. Fertility. They, they associate it. Right. right. With the t fertility. Right. Yeah. It has a historical origin. Mm -hmm. But now it over time it comes to the point that that's the cultural norm. That is what is seen as beautiful and people want to fit in. So they actually go into these huts for about 30 to 60 days before their wedding mm. and are fattened up. And I'm not just talking five pounds. I mean, they can come out 80 pounds heavier, 80 to 100 pounds heavier before Yeah, I watched wedding. a video where the, yeah. gal, the girl was in there for four months and she gained over 100-something. Yeah. 
I yeah. was like, are, really? So they um, no they movie. emerge, and it's it's like the bride of the U.S. that just you know lost fifty pounds before a wedding, and it's just a whole, completely opposite different perspective. So I think with that, I think the health risks are obvious. Oh yeah, with that one in both cases, even there and the U.S. Right. The extreme weight change. Well, the change, dieting and the starvation exactly. <laughs> to fit into a dress could be pretty unhealthy too. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. So then, um, as far as that goes in beauty with in Uganda was there anything else that you noticed or and uh well, did, did you want to talk a little bit about uh Korea the yeah in, in Korea yeah. and if we can go to the uh picture of uh the Korean jaw surgery yeah in Korea that was, I couldn't even recognize you, this gal you guys yeah. are gonna see it. it really I thought it was a photoshop I said that can't be the same plastic girl. surgery is on the rise in Korea and it's one of the hot spots, the global hot spots now for uh, plastic surgery. And there have been lots of surgeries that have been common for many, many years, such as eyelid surgery. Uh, so, and so lifting it so that they're not so close, or or what? Why, um, why creating we... a crease in the eyelid. Did so that girl have? Uh, let's go back to that she, image. Most that likely, image. it looks like she's previously had that surgery too. as well. She yeah. most likely may have had that surgery as well. Um, so that surgery, along with lightening the skin, tucking with various, the ears, even with tucking the something ears, something was different with the. But I really thought it was a different girl. The so newest said. one right now is uh, shaving down the jawline. So if you have a strong jawline, they actually just shave it down, so it comes the to bone? it's more the bone. Ooh. So it's more of a diamond shape right, here right. than square, and that's seen as more feminine. Mm -hmm. So all of this, all of these things that we talk about is to be more appealing to the opposite sex and to look more feminine based on what the men in that society consider more feminine. And, and so I guess, uh, I mean, I could imagine that with any kind of surgery, just like here in the U.S., when you're doing liposuction, there could always be complications. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. So oh, sure. So they're they're leading themselves up for a lifetime of <laughs> jaw problems. <laughs> you know, it's for, not to mention the, the surgery itself was extremely painful, but there can be all types oh, of, yeah. of complication, arthritis then in the joints. I never would have been able to imagine how painful it would have been, but recently I had uh, surgery on my face. They took out a huge chunk of my nose because <laughs> of skin. I thought, why on earth would a woman purposely do this? I was, I'm was, i still, it still hurts. Right. Why right. would they do that to themselves on purpose? But they do. Right, right. They do. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And that's, and that's considered minor. I mean, I, I don't have direct experience with this, but in China, for instance, leg lengthening is common. How where would you? they actually break the leg mm. and they pull it apart and they have a, a steel rod that goes between the two pieces of bone and eventually the two pieces of bone will grow together and oh become... Oh, God, I can't breathe. <laughs> they might gain a few inches. Again, extremely painful surgery, uh, much more likely to break their bones later yeah. because it's very oh, yeah, fragile. Grow, yeah. But that's what some people will do to gain and scar tissue. an inch or two. And then we have an image of the Japanese canine teeth. Yes, can... yes. What's that all about? This is an interesting one. Now, in some cases, this is done on a t temporary basis uh -huh. where you can actually just put them on your teeth. False ones. Uh, false ones. Little Dracula um, teeth. Exactly. But in some cases, women are actually getting surgery and getting those canine teeth more pronounced and shaved to be more pronounced. Well, then they would be more sensitive, wouldn't they, if you shave the tooth again? Exactly, exactly. So and it's both. and it's permanent. And the reason it's done is to give... A little dog tooth, snaggle tooth. Uh, <laughs> it's seen as feminine and childlike. Oh. So that's the main reason that they feminine do it, and to childlike. give that Because youthful... a, a child, they'll have a crooked, and they have those exactly. that are still sharp. They haven't been worn down. Exactly. Huh? Exactly. Fascinating, fascinating. Which is really interesting when you think about that in well, terms of... yeah, let's talk about that really quickly. Uh, about the childlike thing and what's up with wanting... Uh, well, there's... I, I don't recall the name off the top of my head, but there's this. there's <laughs> actually a pop group in Japan. And, I mean, they're older women. I mean, in late teens, early 20s. I mean, they're Most not kids. Most of the time, I mean... But they, they have the... They're promoting this. So they have the canine teeth and all of their pictures are wearing pigtails uh, and little school, gr like school little girl girls. outfits and um yeah <laughs> <Little girl. laughs> so. oh, God. that's another show 
<laughs> I, I guess it could be, definitely, <laughs> when you're talking about anything like that. Now, I, um, you once told me that you did quite a bit of research on female genital mutilation. I'm sure that yes. a lot of people don't even know what that is. Yes. Um, female genital mutilation is sometimes also referred to as uh, FGM. It's done in many countries, but you see it most commonly in Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa. But it's not necessarily tied to a region or a religion. And it's not either tied to being beautiful. It's about control, right? It's about control. Well, both, okay, actually. Okay, really? Um, and what it is, do you want me to Yes, I want you okay. to, yes. Okay, it's a little delicate, but I'll okay. describe it briefly. Um, there are a variety of different forms, but one form is just a removal of the clitoris. Mm -hmm. And the next form is a little more extreme, removal of the clitoris plus part of the surrounding labia. Mm -hmm. And one of the more extreme forms is removal of the clitoris plus the labia. And sewing, and right? sewing the vaginal opening together. Um, and we have to keep in mind here, this is not done in a hospital under anesthesia. It's usually done in a rural area. With the family or something? With the family. They're being <gasps> held down. It's done with scissors, razor oh, blades, God. shards of glass. Um, extremely traumatic. And there are... Now, does that have to do with virginity and not wanting the woman to feel sexual excitement? Or well, why this, would they... Yes. Okay. Yes. That's part of the myth. Okay. So some of the men will believe if the clitoris is not removed that the woman will not remain loyal and she won't be able to <laughs> control sorry, herself right. sexually um, and will cheat. As if that affects her hormones, oh, no, right? Oh, exactly. <laughs> so it's to take away right. that pleasure. But that's what they're doing. Oh, and How sad. And, and sewing the vagina, again, is to ensure that there's virginity. So marriage. is it only sewed until marriage? That yes. I didn't read. Okay. Yes, until marriage. And then the husband does the honors, I suppose. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, but um, there are other myths, too. Like there's a myth that if a man's penis touches a clitoris, he'll become impotent. Um, there's oh a myth that if a baby is born and touches, a, touches the clitoris, the baby will be deformed. But um, they, those probably came into place because they, the original reason for removing it of not wanting the female to have that pleasure, well, then they've got to explain that to all the females. It's all tied together. Right. So, so women... No, you're not cutting off that. <laughs> but what's interesting is women who have had the most horrific experiences with it, like close to God. death, will still want their daughter to have the procedure so she's culturally desirable. accepted, so she's desirable. And now well, it's gone. Well, I guess it's kind of like um, um, circumcision, right? I mean, uh, culturally, for years, right? And dads want their sons to be circumcised because they are, or because Ex exactly. So now it's just, and that's what I mean when I it said it's it's part myth, part cultural, because mm -hmm. that is seen now as what that body part should look like, and that's right. the aesthetic, the acceptable idea. E exactly, exactly. So the kind of. Uh, infection and problems and then i would imagine that now the girl is a throwaway if if she gets major problems down there because of the process and then if she ends up becoming infertile right. because of it then that's a th throwaway in mm -hmm. that case mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so uh it's you're really stuck between a rock and a hard place sometimes mm -hmm. <laughs> hard place sometimes mm -hmm. because you're not sure uh which way to go and it has been banned in many countries but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not, they're not going to do it. it right right well a lot of things are banned i notice in, in a lot of the countries um as far as the um uh not necessarily the fattening huts but i read about something called gavage which also in one of the african continent countries has to do with fattening up the young children and they are tortured mm -hmm. to not to keep eating so they're squeezing their feet with these sticks so that they can k distract them to keep eating and so that is it's being outlawed, but then how do you enforce that? Also, child marriage right. is outlawed in a lot of countries, but right. how, how do you enforce it right. if the whole family is in on it, right? Right. right. It's so, very difficult to legislate away cultural norms, Yeah. particularly if it's in a country where women do not necessarily have a lot of say, right. and the people making these decisions too. are not the education, women. Education, yeah. Right, right. It all boils down to education. Mm -hmm. And the countries that have the most education regarding dispelling some of the myths regarding FGM are the ones that have been most successful. Um, and really quickly, just even though this wasn't one of the questions I warned you about, but 
it, with regards to education, obviously you became very passionate as you started researching that, and you've been teaching for years at Fresno State. Do some of your students, become, I mean, I hope they do, become so passionate about it that they are becoming activists in it? Or what's kind of, why would they do that? I, well, I actually teach it in, not in every single class that I teach, but definitely in my people and places class Talk and in my that. medical geography class. Um, where teams actually uh, work together to so- solve a global issue. Oh, okay. Many teams decide to focus on these sorts of, That's good. of things. I'm glad to hear that because mm-hmm. there's so, mu- so much ignorance as far as lack of knowledge, um, even in our own society. So on that, be quickly before we turn to commercial, here in the U.S. and some of the things that we're doing to ourselves, because mm-hmm. now you're here in the mm-hmm. U.S., you're working with women in the U.S. who are trying to be beautiful and, and right. stop the clock from ticking and getting right. old. Right. What are some right. of the things that we're doing that you would think that uh, are harmful or that can cause a lot of problems that we need to know more about? Well, I, th- I think in the end, we just have to step back and look at why are we doing mm-hmm. these things, mm-hmm. because we can talk about the FGM and say, well, they shouldn't do that right. because it's dangerous. Yet, <laughs> it's easy to point at things. Uh, yeah, but every year, thousands of women will go by their own free will to a plastic surgeon and say, please cut open my breasts, yeah. insert some silicone, and sew me up. You know, so and, and why do they do that? Well, they do that because it makes them feel better. Why does it make them feel better? Because they think they're going to be more attractive. So, well, and some of them have addictions to that, too. Exactly. Like the silicone inject, uh, increased breast size or just injections where they're trying to reduce age, symptoms of age. Yeah, even if we just look at something as simple as Botox, the, mm-hmm. we don't have those long-term studies to know exactly what the effects are. Yeah. And some suggest, uh, some suggest that you're paralyzing that muscle repeatedly and repeatedly that you may end up with a sagging forehead instead of right, a one that no doesn't jank. have wrinkles. Yeah. Now you look like a Cro-Magnum. Yeah. So. Well, thank, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. I'm Mike Briggs, owner and CEO at CentralValleyTalk.com. If you like talk radio, you'll love CentralValleyTalk.com. All local, all live, all the time, CentralValleyTalk.com. Have you seen a house for sale in the Tower District that you might like to own? It doesn't matter what realtor in town is selling it. If you like it, check it out at TowerDistrictProperties.com. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. Hi, Priscilla Sanchez here. How would you like to be a guest on Chuck Leonard Central Valley Buzz? Give me a call or text, 559-203-0619. Hello, I'm Shelly at Horn Photo, and it's time to do more with your pictures. Get those images out of your camera, off your computer, and rescued from deep within your phone, and turn them into memorable photo keepsakes and gifts. Here at Horn Photo in Fresno, we have many wonderful photo items that we produce in-house, and we're here to help you find your individual style. So now's the time. Stop by Horn Photo in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Ease, or visit us online at hornphoto.com to explore the possibilities. Ag is a vital part of the economy here in the Central Valley. Hi, I'm Ty Simpson, sales manager of the new Bland Solar Office here in Clovis. And if you're in the ag industry, you've probably given thought to solar. Whether you run a dairy, orchard, farm, or ranch at Bland Solar, we can custom design a system that's perfect for your business. The fact is that in this economy, replacing high-cost utility power with solar power is a great way to improve your bottom line. Bland Solar looks forward to serving the residents of the Central Valley. So call us today at 554-5657. Bland Solar, the Valley's expert in solar. Watch Mike and Athena Fridays at 1 p.m. on CentralValleyTalk.com. For all of your real estate needs, call Mike Briggs Properties, 559-486-6758, or check us out at MikeBriggsProperties.com. Hi, I'm Mike Briggs from Mike Briggs Properties. We're in some very uncertain economic times. Many people have lost their homes. Many people face losing their homes now. Know your rights, know your options, 
Come talk to the experts right here at Mike Briggs Properties. By the way, we'll talk to you for free. We do not charge any fees at Mike Briggs Properties. Call us at 486-6758. Mike Briggs Properties, 486-6758. CentralValleyTalk.com Hi, and welcome back to Courageous Journeys. Uh, now we're going to get into some of the myths that we have here in the U.S., and uh, that a lot of us believe until we are educated otherwise. So um, I have with me here Associate Professor Michelle Calvarese, and we're gonna bring up a couple of images while we're talking about those myths, okay? So our first image is uh, of the, the uh, wax, when, you, when you're going to get a wax job and uh, kind of what you may or may not believe as far as, as that goes. Waxing, of course, a very popular procedure in the United States. Yeah. Hair removal is a huge industry of in, every area. in general. <laughs> um, but some people do believe that the wax is warm enough to kill any bacteria or viruses that happens to be in the wax. So they're not like sterilizing their tools? Or they're not sterilizing their tools. And a common practice, uh, an industry term is called double dipping. And what that basically means is you dip a wax stick in the pot, get some wax, spread it on the skin, same stick in the pot on the skin, and they keep double dipping. So Are they then using that same pot for different people? Yes. Oh. So the same wax that you could be getting your lip wax with could have just done five Brazilian waxes. <laughs> you know, before. And so, yeah, there could be a transfer of stuff. Yeah. And that's uh, it, it's a that's myth. That's pretty common then. That I mean, it I wouldn't common. have known better. I wouldn't it have even known. Every that. if you ever get wax, they, every time a stick touches your face, it should be thrown in the trash and a, and a fresh one. So used. You, they still can use the same pot, but it's a clean stick going it's in. A clean stick, exactly, okay. exactly. Because the wax temperature is actually a fairly low temperature. It's and not it's right high. where bacteria breeds, exactly. right? Exactly. In the 80s, so 70s, it's, something like that. It's a breeding ground for viruses yeah. and bacteria, not the opposite. If the wax was hot enough to kill all that, it would burn the client. So if, okay, so transfer of bacteria, and let's say they didn't, you know, you're getting transferred. So you can get, I guess, what, staph or what kind of infections? Would oh, there are all types of, all of infections of that can that can transfer, but that would be a more common one. I would think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even just to minor skin rashes and things like that, that you might not even be able to identify mm. uh, that was traced back to your, your wax. So, yeah, make sure <laughs> your, your esthetician is not double dipping. And then, you know, <laughs> being in the green industry myself for years, a lot of people, um, another very common or greenwashing or organic, organic washing kind of uh, thing that marketing companies do, do, people think, well, they, and you probably get this all the time now, mm -hmm. well, is your product going to be organic, right? So uh, right. talk to us about that. Okay. Um, th this is a tough one because it is a industry fad right now. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the best way to put it. And organic products are making a huge impact in the industry. And... The thing I just want to stress is that just because something is natural or organic does not necessarily mean it's better. It also doesn't that it's not, not harmful either. That it's not harmful. Now, doesn't mean it's not good or that mm -hmm. it's not a good product, but I think what most consumers may not realize is that those terms are not regulated at all. So any skincare company can put natural on the bottle and it means nothing because how do we define natural? Right. I mean, this, well, you were telling you know, me when we were having a private conversation that cosmetic regulations in general are so loose yeah. that there's just so much that can be going into it or not into it that they're advertising that's just so mis misleading. Exactly. Exactly. Because what they will tend to do to differentiate themselves from another brand is to market a particular ingredient as a bad ingredient. Right. So if it's a, a paraben, so for like instance, uh -huh. this this is one that will just will not die. Although there have been studies after studies after studies showing that the original study linking breast cancer to parabens was extremely flawed. Once it gets oh. out there in the media, that's interesting because yeah. I had someone asking me last night when yeah. I told them you were coming on the show. Well, does her product have paraben in it? And I didn't even know what to answer to that but so 
what it, the study see that's the conflict is that you get so much conflicting information as the consumer is exactly. what I am the original st the original study just to kind of narrow mm -hmm. it down the original Please. study did not have a control whenever you do a scientific study you need to have a control right so they took breast tissue from someone that had breast cancer and found parabens okay oh. now what they didn't do was look at someone else who had breast cancer to see if they also had parabens or someone who didn't have breast cancer. Oh, that's to not see even a scientific they had, experiment. No. So it, it was, you cannot make a link. An based assumption on that. like that. And it's been debunked over and over and over. But again, once it leaks, it's, it's so hard. hard to uh, yeah. retrain all of us to know what the truth is too. And the re reality is now a lot of the preservatives that they're using instead of parabens are newer ingredients that do not have the long-term safety record of parabens the, that could actually be more dangerous and we don't know. Right, because so, there's no long-term testing. That's yeah, pretty scary. Yeah. So there's another one that I thought was kind of funny, <laughs> actually, that you talked about water and our skin and, you know, how everything is, a lot of us believe, and that's, that's another thing that it's going around that we're being told. Everything in your body, your skin is the largest organ, and that's what I was thinking mm -hmm. in my head, too, to your body, which it is. But what? I hear this all the time and it drives me crazy. And that is that anything that you put on your skin will enter your bloodstream. And this is another one of the lines that are used to like promote. Like water, right? To promote, yeah. Well, well to promote uh, organic products. Because they'll say, well, everything that you put on your skin is going to go into your bloodstream. Our skin is meant to be a barrier. That's why we have it. Okay. So we want... <laughs> We want to have a barrier from everything in the outside world. Now, there are some uh, things that can, of course, go through the bloodstream, but they have to be through a, the skin. Through the skin, there have, but they have to be a small enough molecular structure in order to, to get do through that. the derma to get to. Yeah. The so when you have things like transdermal patches and things of that sort, yes, that's going to go through the bloodstream. There are some ingredients out there that we know go into the bloodstream. Okay. Um, but to say everything that you put on your skin goes into your bloodstream, we would be dead. <laughs> we would be dead. I mean, we would be we dead. Would if drown we drowned every time we take a shower. If we took a shower, <laughs> we would drown because all the water would go into our bloodstream. So that's just another one of those things that just keeps getting passed around. But if you step back and actually think about it, like why do we have skin? Yeah. You know, it's to protect right, ourselves. Right, right, right. So... I would say probably 95% of cosmetic products that we put on our skin do not, do not enter. And you notice that even some don't moisturize, whatever. But anyway, on, on that note, uh, as far as ingredient labels go, mm -hmm. you often hear things like, well, if I can't pronounce it, then I shouldn't be using it or eating it or right. any of it. So let's uh, right. let's talk about that for right. a second as far as ingredients go. Yes, that's another one. People will say, well, if you can't pronounce it, then you shouldn't put it on your face. Um, <laughs> Again, what a lot of people don't realize is that the labeling is regulated. So when you use a label, it has to use what is called in the industry the inky name, which is the international uh, nomenclature for cosmetic ingredients. Okay. So is it like for me in horticulture, the Latin name? Exactly. Of okay. Exactly. So it is a universally recognized name. Because it's completely descriptive exactly. versus a common name. Exactly. So most will not be able to recognize a particular ingredient by its inky name, right. nor be able to the pronounce consumer. it. Right. The consumer. So it could be a very simple product like shea butter that has mm -hmm. a very long, complicated, and difficult to pronounce inky name. That's what would be on the label. If someone used that logic, then they wouldn't right. buy that. That would product. be on the ingredient label, not the marketing label that says shea butter. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And that's why sometimes people, uh, consumers, will find it difficult to read labels and what's in this product, what isn't in this product. I can't find the vitamin C on the ingredient list because it will probably will not say vitamin C. What would it say? It will be the inky name for that particular form of oh, vitamin C. Okay. So Down to it'll the be, very d definite. Exactly. Um, exactly. And there are dozens of forms of vitamin C and patented combinations of vitamin C. So it would be very difficult for the average consumer uh, to decipher the entire ingredient yeah. label. So let's talk about a couple of myths really quick before we run mm -hmm. out of time. Some additional ones. Like now, um, now, now with True Skin Care, you have, you're an esthetician and mm -hmm. you have um, a treatment center that you use, mm -hmm. a facility. And you mentioned something about chemical peels and the myth around that. Yes. Uh, chemical peels have come a long way. 
Uh, chemical peels of the past, people conjured up images of uh, Samantha and Sex of the City with bandages all over her face when she got a <laughs> chemical peel. Um, and uh, that still can't happen, but chemical peels now can range from having no downtime at all, no peeling at all, to having several days of flaking. So you, you don't necessarily have to shed like a snake in order to see improvement. And pe- Okay, okay, so... Some people think that if they're not shedding, they're calling you. Exactly. Going, I'm not shedding. Exactly. It's not working. Exactly. And then why would somebody why would somebody do a chemical peel? I know that for acne, it can be a treatment. Do they do that for age as well? Oh, yeah. Chemical okay. peels can be used for a multitude of different types of conditions from acne to wrinkles to hyperpigmentation to scarring. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Okay. Okay. Lots of information. So we will be right back after this commercial break. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, right here in the Tower District and all over the Centro Valley, you'll see the Bobby Salazar signs everywhere. Let's bring in Bobby Salazar. Bobby! Hey, how are you? How's it going, man? Good. Real good to, real good to have you back on. Now, uh, a new sponsor of The Buzz, I want to thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, let's, well, I want to get right down to it. What'd you bring? Well, this is our famous uh, party tray. It's our variety tray, we call it, and it has just a little bit of everything. It has uh, little taquitos and burritos and quesadillas and guacamole. And it's one of the, the most popular ones that we sell. It's, uh, you can call in. We can have them ready in like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. You know how busy we are, but, you know, spur of the moment, this is a great deal to, to get for any party, any occasion. For the Super Bowl or any occasion, order a party tray from Bobby Salazar's. Hey Stan Gross of Horn Photo. Are you looking for a camera that takes better pictures than your phone? Why not give Horn Photo a shot? We can show you fantastic cameras from Nikon, Canon, Sony, and GoPro. Your time is valuable, so before you buy from Costco, Best Buy, or the internet, come see us. We've got great prices and deals, super knowledgeable staff, and we've been selling cameras in Fresno for 76 years. We're in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Knees, or go to hornphoto.com, Fresno's Camera Center. Solar energy is now more affordable than ever. Hi, I'm Ty Simpson, sales manager of the new Bland Solar office here in Clovis. And right now at Bland Solar, we're offering a program with zero down payment. That's right, zero money out of your pocket. This new program is affordable and easy with guaranteed production and no appraisals needed. In fact, your new system can be up and running in as little as four weeks. Bland Solar looks forward to serving the residents of the Central Valley. So call us today at 554-5657. Bland Solar, the Valley's expert in solar. Hi, my name is Bonnie, and I'm a show producer here at CentralValleyTalk.com. We have a lot of great shows that you can share your business with our viewers. I'd love for you to give me a call. My number is 559-289-9687. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. For all of your real estate needs, call Mike Briggs Properties, 559-486-6758, or check us out at MikeBriggsProperties.com. Watch Tim Teeson live Wednesdays at 3 p.m. right here on CentralValleyTalk.com and on digital channel 33.2. If you missed the live broadcast, we're on every Wednesday night at 11 p.m. on Comcast channel 200 and digital channel 43.5. You don't want to miss this. CentralValleyTalk.com Hi and welcome back to Courageous Journeys with me, Theodora Michelides. I have my guest today, Michelle Calvaris, here, for Associate Professor at Fresno State and owner of Truth Skin Care and Dermatruth. And we're having a lot of fun here talking about myths, so we're going to bring one more up before we get into the business aspect of what she's doing right now and what she's bringing to the public. And that is before and after shots of... Um, yes. What we see in in publications and whatnot, right? Don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are finally catching on to this, but the vast majority of before and after photos that you see are fake, are fake and they've been retouched. Magazine ads, definitely, mm. but especially um, ads for skincare products, 
mascara, you know, where they're wearing false I don't eyelashes. Even know how they get those eyelashes. Um, you know, everyone has a flawless face in magazine ads, but even befores and afters for products and for for local spas and clinics and, and things like that. Um, you have to have the exact same lighting, you have to have the exact same angle. Uh, so you really need to have the right type of equipment in place to get an accurate before and after. Uh, otherwise, it's all smoke and mirrors. Right. Well, and sm- from smoke and mirrors to <laughs> truth, um, you named your business Truth Skin Care. And let's talk about how you went from researching and being a teacher to getting into that industry. Yeah. Um, well, I just started getting frustrated at what was going on in, in the beauty industry. And when I started learning about the global beauty patterns in other parts of the world, when I came back, I started looking at what was going on in the industry in the United States. And skincare is something that I was always interested in. I mean, I'll admit, I've been doing a full skincare routine since I was 13 years old. Oh, wow. Uh, so I've always, <laughs> You're way better than me. I've <laughs> always been interested in, in uh, skincare. Um, but once I started looking at the claims that were being made, right. Um, and I realized, you know, we're not, we're not really that much different when it comes to why we use certain products and why we do certain things. And the other cultures that you were studying. Exactly. So I, I decided uh, to go to beauty school and get an aesthetics license and learn more about the industry. And I wanted to provide services that were truthful in the sense that when someone came in for a consultation... I wasn't going to tell them they're going to look 20 years younger. Uh, I wasn't going to give them false promises. And I'm I'm up front with clients. This is how many treatments it's going to take. This is what we can do. This is what you can expect to see. This is how long it's going to take to see results. Mm -hmm. Or even if I can't help them and say, no, you really need to see a dermatologist. Um, So I'm not the person to go to if you want to get a body wrap and be told that you're going to lose 24 inches in an hour. I'm... I'm not that person. I'm going to be honest with you about what it can do, and there's some things that it can do, but you're not going to lose 24 inches in an hour. So um, that's why I decided to start. And so at first you were um, you were in another salon for Mm -hmm. quite a few years when Mm -hmm. you and I met several years ago, Mm -hmm. and now you have a beautiful location that's very intimate and private. And this is the picture of the outside of the business. And then inside, it's very serene and um, has the lights. You can dim the lights so we relax. I've been I've been going there, <laughs> my daughter mainly, but um, we really enjoy it. So good, um, good. As far as being a business owner, once you got into leaving the salon mm-hmm. owned by someone else, mm-hmm. now you're venturing into owning your own business, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that comes with a whole set of problems. Well. Uh, a whole new set challenges, of problems, right? <laughs> pr- challenges, but rewards yeah. as well. Yeah. Because now uh, you have control uh-huh. over how you want to run your business. So uh, I feel like I can now offer the types of services that I want to offer um, the way I want to offer them. Um, but uh, sure, there are lots of challenges because I'm wearing... 10 different hats right, right now because you're still teaching i'm still teaching and developing and the product and let's talk about your product a little bit so mm-hmm. you you went from just being an esthetician to deciding that there wasn't the products that you wanted to offer or how did you decide to make your own product right i never asked you that before i i decided that well that was ultimately what i wanted to do oh. so when i went in when i went that to aesthetic school that was the motivation but i didn't want to be one of these people that just um, got a formula that was already pre-made and just right. slapped my name on it. I wanted to be involved in it. Right. And if I was going to be intimately involved with the formulation, I needed to know about the skincare industry. So that's why I ended up going to aesthetic school. Right. I started from the bottom right. and, and really learned really learned how the skin works. Mm-hmm. And I had the experience of working with dozens of other different product lines and I could see what was working for clients what wasn't working for clients Mm -hmm. the claims that other manufacturers were using right right uh, what kind of results they were providing and based on all of that I finally got to the point where I felt like I'm now ready I know enough about the industry I've researched ingredients as much as I can research them for this first launch product um and and now it's time so about uh, a year and a half ago, I started uh, working with a lab in Southern California on my first product. 
for Derma Truth. And it is getting ready to launch. Let's bring up an Im uh, image of that. So what is this first product? Well, the brand is Derma Truth, and the first product is called uh, In the Beginning, and it is a nice. antioxidant peptide serum. And I yes. developed this product for someone who is totally confused when they walk into the drugstore, the department store, and they see a hundred different bottles and they don't know which bottle to pick, what do I use, right. where should I start? This is where you start. So that's why in the beginning. This is where you begin because it is full of antioxidants. Okay. And these are the environmental aggressors that cause aging. So being it full of antioxidants, does it fall under the category also of like a supplement? Would it be carried in a supplement aisle? Uh, it would still be in the skincare, okay. the skincare aisle. Okay. Um, but the focus is not just on correction of existing issues, which does, but also on right. prevention. Right. So it's good for someone that is in their 60s and, and has issues, but is also very good for someone that's young, you know, late teens, early 20s, that wants to start a skincare regimen, but they're not sure where to start. So why not protect yourself Right. from that environmental damage instead of waiting till you get the damage and then you have to correct it. Right. So um, what did you call it again? It's a peptide serum? Mm -hmm. So what, it, what does that mean and how by putting it on your skin is that detoxifying you? I don't understand. Well, the antioxidants will work against the oxidative stress. Okay. The peptides... Well, there's all different types of peptides. Okay. Yeah, but there are actually hundreds yeah, of different. science. Yeah, these are, there are hundreds of different peptides. But now we kind of have cosmetic designer peptides okay. almost where they're, okay. they're made in the lab. Okay. And they're combinations of different ingredients that all can do different things. So some are for uh, softening the skin. Mm -hmm. Some are for softening fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, some are for plumping up So the yours, skin. let's talk about yours and... and Antioxidants. So if they're gonna if they're gonna spend the money and put this, why are they doing this? What is it? It's preventative. It's preventative. So that you. It's preventative, but will also address existing issues of fine lines and wrinkles. So it's the health of your skin. Right? It's the health exactly. Okay. It's it's the it's health. Your of, health. It's so the ultimately, health of the skin. full body wellness. We're starting there in the beginning before you're trying to turn back the clock. Right. You're trying to make sure you're okay. right. It will address. It will address existing issues, but it's not designed to be a wrinkle cream mm -hmm. necessarily mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or uh, one specific issue in general. It's the overall health of the skin. Right. For but someone like me, that would be a good product because you know yes. me. I'm not very concerned about trying to do facelifts or injections or any of that, but right. I am concerned about my health. Well, and, and like, why would you buy the wrinkle cream if you're not buying something to protect yourself from getting the wrinkles too? Because you're going to keep getting the wrinkles right. while right. you're using the wrinkle cream. Right. So if you use them in combination, it makes much more sense to have an antioxidant product along with whatever other products you might be using. So, okay. So you've been busily working like a little busy bee trying to wear all these hats and get this product launched. And there was a lot involved in that with testing and Mm -hmm. And so now you're getting ready to launch. Where are you looking to have the product available? Well, the product should be, it is being manufactured right now. It should be available, I would say, within the next two weeks. Wow. And I'm going to in have... In your hot little hand. In my hot little hands. And I'm going to have a uh, special VIP launch for Exciting. clients. Mm -hmm. uh, so there will be special uh, pricing for clients. And then within the next two to three months will have a national launch or it'll be available on my website. And your website, um, can we bring that up on the bottom of the screen? That's, what is that, www. www.truthskincare.com. Okay. However, we're in the process right now of building a dermatruthskincare.com. Specifically for your product. Specifically for the product. Okay, but if people want to find out more about you and your business right now, they would go to truthskincare.com. Truth mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and... Um, so and on facebook as well okay you have a facebook for the business yeah they can go to facebook.com backslash truth skincare okay there's also one for the product mm -hmm. um, backslash derma truth where you can get more information on the launch but on my fan page for the truth skincare fan page i offer lots of skincare tips oh great i dispel a lot of myths a few times a week I have contests. There's actually a facial giveaway contest going on right now. What's that? For a either a So they have to like you have to like the page. They have to like the page 
and they like the post uh -huh. about the contest, and it's for a raspberry chocolate truffle facial or Ooh. a champagne facial. Your choice. I want to eat it. <laughs> I know um, my daughter had a uh, pumpkin spice or something. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. She was like, mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> well, you do a wonderful job, and you are truthful and honest with your clients, and I'm really excited about your product. Thank and you. Is there anything else before we wrap it up that you'd like to tell our viewers about your product that's coming out in the beginning yeah just keep keep looking for it at dermatruth.com and i always offer free consultations so if you're not quite sure where you want to head in, in terms of treatments and you're kind of nervous about getting yeah. something don't be nervous i offer free consultations you can book online just come on in i can look at your existing products take a look at your skin and guide you in the yeah, right direction you and i did that so thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming thank on you. today michelle thank and i you. hope you guys enjoyed all that information Thanks for tuning in to Courageous Journeys. I'm Mike Briggs, owner and CEO at CentralValleyTalk.com. If you like talk radio, you'll love CentralValleyTalk.com. All local, all live, all the time, CentralValleyTalk.com. Have you seen a house for sale in the Tower District that you might like to own? It doesn't matter what realtor in town is selling it. If you like it, check it out at TowerDistrictProperties.com. Are you losing weight drinking coffee? Find out how Javita can change your life, help you lose weight, stay healthy, all while making money doing it. Call now, 246-4895. Hi, Priscilla Sanchez here. How would you like to be a guest on Chuck Leonard Central Valley Buzz? Give me a call or text, 559-203-0619. Hello, I'm Shelly at Horn Photo, and it's time to do more with your pictures. Get those images out of your camera, off your computer, and rescued from deep within your phone, and turn them into memorable photo keepsakes and gifts. Here at Horn Photo in Fresno, we have many wonderful photo items that we produce in-house, and we're here to help you find your individual style. So now's the time. Stop by Horn Photo in the Bellagio at Blackstone and Ease, or visit us online at hornphoto.com. To explore the possibilities. Ag is a vital part of the economy here in the Central Valley. Hi, I'm Ty Simpson, sales manager of the new Bland Solar Office here in Clovis. And if you're in the ag industry, you've probably given thought to solar. Whether you run a dairy, orchard, farm, or ranch at Bland Solar, we can custom design a system that's perfect for your business. The fact is that in this economy, replacing high cost utility power with solar power is a great way to improve your bottom line. Bland Solar looks forward to serving the residents of the Central Valley. So call us today at 554-5657. Bland Solar, the Valley's expert in solar. Hey, everybody, yeah. let's have some fun. Right. You only live once, and when you're dead, you're done. So let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Watch Mike and Athena Fridays at 1 p.m. on CentralValleyTalk.com. Central CentralValleyTalk.com.